Hi, hello, welcome. It's me, Beata, from horoscopesandreadings.com. And today I have a very special guest on my channel. It's a UK astrologer named Justina Rossi. Hi, Justina. Hi, Beata. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, uh, for your presence and uh, that you decided that I can interview you. Because what you probably don't know, I already mentioned that you will be in uh, on my channel in one of my videos that uh, we will be discussing astrology. It's a very hot topic on this channel. Relationships, astrology, and uh, everything connected to it. But uh, I will talk about it uh, in a minute. But firstly, I would like to introduce you. But who knows, maybe uh, my viewers already know you, but please tell us something about you. So hello, and uh, thank you for having me on your channel. So I specialize in, uh, well, in Western astrology. I, I'm also interested in traditional techniques as well. And uh, here on my channel, I uh, mainly do predictive astrology, but every now and then I like to explore different kinds of topics. And at the moment we are in Scorpio season, so I thought it would be fun to connect and talk about uh, Plutonian relationships, love, uh, and all these deep and intense relationships that come um, with Scorpio and Pluto connections. So, yeah, so here and um, yeah, I'm obsessed with astrology and uh, I love it. And I found your channel a few months ago while browsing uh, probably topics regarding to Scorpio, Pluto, and um, I came across your channel and then few weeks ago I just uh, decided to uh, reach out and uh, you know see where it takes me <laughs> or it takes us <laughs> in this journey so nice to meet you yes uh, thank you very much for reaching out um, first of all I would like to tell my audience that uh, everything about Justina her channel her website her services will be listed in the description below this video so definitely check it out uh, you are mainly, yes, as you have told me, this predictive uh, astrologer, but also you use Horari. And this is very interesting. So before we start uh, with relationships, um, I would like to ask you, what is actually Horari? Because, you know, it is not so known in white public. So tell us a little bit more. So uh, Horari astrology, uh, it's... Um fascinating because uh, basically you don't need your time of birth for Harari astrology basically you uh, you ask a question and you use the time of the question so this is like a a, a, a time of um, of birth of the question this is the time that you use for your question and you look at the chart and you seek answer for your question from the moment you ask this question. So it's fascinating. And mm -hmm. uh, I first came across uh, Harari a few years ago. And last year, actually, uh, I did a, a, a professional course. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's so much studying involved because it's very detailed. It's a traditional astrology. It doesn't use the, uh, the outer planets that were, you know, discovered in the recent years or decades. But well, the main thing is that um, if you don't know your time of birth, you know you can ask a question, and we use the time of the time of the question basically. And this is, you know, we look at the chart, and uh, it's very complicated because you look at the, mm -hmm. you know, how the planets uh, are, where the planets are placed, how strong they are by a house, by a sign. So you know, this um, the, the, we look at the table of dignities and ability. So mm -hmm. it's it's it's, um, it's a very difficult actually field of astrology, but uh, very interesting as well. So you can get into very um, you can get into the depth of some detailed yeah. questions basically. Okay, and what kind of questions we can ask? Well, I think uh, the most common questions are uh, about love. So uh, basically with, with questions in general, you need to be specific. 
So you mm -hmm. need to give a time frame, ideally, to get the best answer for your question. Because if it's too vague, then the answer will be vague as well. But generally, people usually ask about love. So where, when will I meet someone in the next 12 months? Or uh, Harari is also very useful for lost properties. So where is my ring? Where is my wallet? Where is my cat? These are also very common questions. Okay, so that, that's fantastic, actually. Yes. Um... I know Horari, but uh, definitely not in depth. And um, all I heard about it is that it is so difficult. So yeah, mm -hmm. you are confirming it then. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, and you continuously need to develop your knowledge and you know, stay on track. Right? Okay. It's interesting. It's, I mean, you know, I'm Scorpio rising, so I like to kind of get into the depth. <laughs> I like yes. to play a detective. So that's yes. really uh, the case here. Yes, and would you be willing to share with us a little bit more? As you have mentioned, you are Scorpio rising, and what else is there? Where is your sun or moon? Uh, so my sun is in Cancer, and my moon is in Leo. Mm. And Venus, as I know, is in the eighth house. In the eighth house, in Gemini, and in tightly Gemini. conjunct Chiron. Yes. Mm. So it's. Mm. Uh, so a lot of Quite intense. Yes, very intense, yes. And yeah, a lot of water, Scorpio rising, Cancer Sun. And uh, yes, uh, very interesting uh, even for us, because as you know, I'm Virgo rising and it is really not fancy as Scorpio, but I like to study Scorpios and uh, everything connected to Lao as uh, even Scorpio people perceive it. So uh, today's topic or like the main theme is uh, my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite topic really <laughs> ever. It's Pluto Venus. You know, firstly, uh, I would like to maybe start with birth chart because I don't know about you, but the way I read even synastry is that I still have to go back to birth chart and really to try understand who is this person, right? Uh, you know, how is his capacity to love or what really love means uh, for this person? So uh, if you would uh, share with us, um, maybe um, from your personal experience or even in general, uh, with that Scorpio, Venus, being in the eighth house? How is it like? How does it feel? Well, uh, Venus, um, first of all, Venus in Gemini. This is like being in two minds, you know, uh, mm. as well. <laughs> when it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, even personal doesn't really have to be love. But overall, with Venus in the eighth house, this is about seeking deep connections mm -hmm. and it's it's difficult because um, not everyone wants that that depth but um, I really I I really want to I like to connect people on a deeper level mm -hmm. and, uh, and do kind of explore deep topics as well so generally there's a lot of depth and intensity uh, in my relationships and they have always been and you know now that we've discussed the uh, um, a bit of you know Pluto and Scorpio. I definitely had a relationship in my past, and when um, that uh, Pluto energy was kind of manifested in a wrong way, so that mm -hmm. was so basically with Venus in the eighth house, you attract also you attract um, relationships that are deep, even though you seek that deep connection and you really are fulfilled if you connect with another on a soul-like level, because if you don't, you might feel unfulfilled in your love life, in your relationship. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is the, there could be this intensity, there could, there could be power plays. And uh, I also attract people who uh, can be obsessed with me, you know, and it doesn't have to be a love, it could be a friendship. So people who are really drawn to me and uh, yes, they could, they could be even like energy vampires sometimes, you know, because I've got uh, Pluto in Scorpio, Scorpio. So I, I am quite intense. I come across as quite intense, even though I'm very calm at the same time. But here with Venus in the eighth house, it's, 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 uh, it's not an easy placement. 
because relationships um, also have got Chiron here at the same degree as Venus. And oh, I, I, I don't, I believe it's not a coincidence. There, there are lessons I need to learn um, uh, through the right relationships um, in a difficult way. But but this is probably needed for for you know for my soul growth. But there's a lot of pain definitely and uh, in relationships and um, yes. But at the same time, through that pain, you know, looking back, I, I experienced um, a greater uh, self understanding or mm -hmm. understanding of love or even empowerment. You know, self empowerment through those power struggles that I have experienced in the past. Yes, they make me much stronger than I am today. This is really interesting. You know, last week I had one client, and she has Venus in the eighth house, and uh, she was talking about all these like stalkers and very weird, <laughs> even individuals. And um, this is this is actually very fascinating for me for someone who who doesn't have this placement, but probably this is um, for people who has Venus in Scorpio and even Venus square Pluto or Venus opposition Pluto, Venus conjunct Pluto in the birth chart, because there is something in your energy that is so alluring, you know, and uh, um, I can see it actually in you, you know, even your eyes, it's it's that yes i have one in one of my videos scorpio rising and it's that stare it's um it's not uh, easy to explain but it, it's in energy so this is very interesting so okay so let's uh, dive into synastry so uh we only have pluto venus because uh, pluto as uh, we all know is that let's say god of underworld but uh, it's a game changer you know if you once experience a relationship with a pluto venus involved in your synastry this can definitely change you for good or for bad i don't know but uh, it, it's very transformational so uh, we could actually cover uh, you know, contacts, easy and difficult contacts uh, in synastry. And um, okay, so I always start with difficult ones. I don't even know why. Uh, but uh, maybe let's start with easy ones. Uh, let's enjoy what, what you can tell us about Pluto, Venus, uh, sextile and trine. What are, what are your thoughts? Well, I... I think I would also, I, I usually also go for the squares and you know, <laughs> positions, but let's start from the positive, positive yes. uh, energy. So as with, you know, with Pluto, and Pluto is positively aspected by the other, by Venus, you know, in the other chart between two people in synastry, this can definitely uh, increase the uh, growth and uh, passion in this relationship. A positive transformation and regeneration of both partners of this of mutual mutual connection. So there is that great need for for love, for being loved, but also um, well for being together, for forming a deep connection on a soul like deep level. Because I think this is similar to having Venus in the eighth house in a way, isn't it? Because Venus and Pluto connection. This is so th these. Um, two people can really connect strongly and deeply and this relationship can have a transformational effect on them as a couple but also on them individually mm -hmm. so this is um, quite mm -hmm. uh, interesting now at the same time here with Venus and Pluto uh, this can also lead to really intense uh, in a positive sense, experiences, passion, love, affection, chemistry, you no know, charm, magnetism between each other. So it's, it's um, um, yes, I think that even the Venus person can feel like really empowered by being with the Pluto person. Yes, uh, I like this combination and. You know, I would like to know your opinion if you think there is a difference uh, having sextile and having trine. What do you think? I think a sextile can, because uh, sextiles are about opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think a sextile could uh, perhaps uh, 
think in this relationship with a Plutarch person, perhaps the Venus person could, uh, there could be some opportunities that perhaps it depends where they meet, perhaps uh, connected to career, connected to an increased public status, for example. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and is Trine stronger? Sorry? Ah, Trine. Uh, well, Trine, um, I think tr they represent different energies because with uh, sextiles, opportunities, and here with Trines, this is about, uh, well, positive experiences, positive experiences, mm -hmm. uh, positive exchange of energies, um, and generally harmony. I think this is about the harmony in relationship. Harmony, balance. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, this is very nice to have in a relationship. Uh, I was not uh, that lucky yet, but um, yes, um, it, 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 it is really like uh, we feel that that person really loves us and he wants the best for us almost in an unconditional way. This aspect or these aspects, these easy contacts can be really supportive. And uh, uh, in easy contacts, Pluto person can actually show his love to Venus person and really make her feel beautiful, right? Even her appearance, her body, right? The way she looks, he can definitely support her. So it's very nice, yes. I can I can I can see what you're what you're talking about. That the female, well, the person with Venus actually, the person doesn't have to be female, but the person with the Venus uh, placement can feel beautiful, can feel loved and desired mm -hmm. by yes. the person. Mm. Yes. So then we have these opposite forces. We have Pluto opposing Venus and Pluto. Mm -hmm querying Venus uh, in Sinastri. So what do you think about these aspects or what is your experience? What is your opinion? I think these are definitely more challenging and um, this can create, uh, well, jealousy, manipulation, codependency, but also this desperation, you know, the, one person might be desperate to be loved. And if the other person doesn't feel the same way, you know, um, perhaps the Pluto person might become obsessed and it might be difficult to let go because there is this obsession. There is this strong att attraction, but there's a clash of energies and perhaps connection is not uh, received uh, both ways. It's like a one way, um, one way kind of one sided or one sided mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. So it might be difficult for one uh, of the partners to let go and they might obsessively want to get uh, this person on their side. And this could lead to really uh, challenging situations, energies. But at the same time, uh, this um, because Pluto can overpower Venus, then mm -hmm. Venus might uh, be, become codependent mm -hmm. and lose their kind of... Um, well, might uh, self-esteem, self-worth, because that's also Venus. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, definitely that codependency. Code and also with squares and opposition, so there could be difficult to difficulty to achieve that affection, achieve that strong desire, mm -hmm. mutual desire. Yes, yes. Mutual desire. There is definitely that imbalance. There imbalance, is, yes. yes. Or perhaps yes. a fear that the partner might uh, leave, leave uh, the other person, you know, the other person, the other partner, or cheating. Cheating Cheat. is also very common in. So probably this yeah. is what you wanted to mention because uh, you you mentioned that uh, in the video that we did. Uh, mm -hmm. on, we on did together. Video. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Loud triangles are famous. I mean, I, I already talked about this on my channel that um, extramarital affairs or, you know, all kinds of affairs really are uh, typically connected to Pluto square Venus. I don't know why it is, but, you know, as I have my own like research with my clients for all those years, uh, so I have 
quite let's say wide database and um, yeah yeah this is this is really happening not all the relationships like pluto square venus are triangles but definitely uh what you have mentioned that it can be one-sided like unrequited love and this is also very common yes um i think that also one of the partners might become overly demanding overly possessive about yeah. the other partner this could be also uh, the case here and because yeah. of um, well a trust i think trust might mm. be also an issue here with the squares and opposition developing that trust especially if um, if there are power struggles experience or generally lack of affection or if that you know if their desire is only one-sided Mm -hmm. uh, trust is very fragile and uh, typically really even cannot be achieved because there is a lot of suspicion going on that uh, our partner is not um, is not faithful or will leave us or still there is some something going on yeah it's like there is still something going on you know it's like you really cannot rest if you mm -hmm. have this uh, in sinastry because uh, there is always something hidden or even if it's not uh we we think that it it is still something and um, yeah uh, th this can be really heavy and what about uh sorry uh you wanted to say something uh no no because you were talking about this uh, i think because of this obsession that it's yes it might be difficult to develop that trust because we might be thinking oh maybe there's another person maybe there's someone else Mm -hmm. mm. You know, honestly, I don't even have Venus in the eighth house or Venus Pluto combination in my birth chart or Venus in Scorpio, but I don't know why, but all my life I am actually experiencing this type of energy. And this is probably the reason why I am so drawn to it. Uh, so, yeah, but coming back uh, to our topic, what about uh, the conjunction? What do you think about conjunction? Well, I think the conjunction, well, um, I, what I see is probably when this, these two people meet each other, there'll be a lot of, a lot of affection and intensity yeah. surrounded around this. So there is this magnetism, so this invisible, you know, invisible aura energies. I think it's so intense. They might be really drawn. To each other and they might not be able to separate at least in the first you know phase yes. of relationship because they might be inseparable inseparable and uh, yeah I, th I feel that this is so intense and that uh, yeah they, they could be like they couldn't be able to separate basically i think there is that very strong strong connection affection yeah. desire passion Yes, um, it is that aspect where two people feel like they are picking each other and uh, it's like they are sure that uh, they want to be together. But you know what I have noticed with conjunction? I mean, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the thing everyone knows, but obviously it's like uh, I have Venus in Virgo so everyone who has Pluto in Virgo will be in conjunction to my Venus you know and not everyone is my type <laughs> <laughs> they're actually quite old right <laughs> um, so yes so basically I actually have Venus in Gemini so I have never experienced and I probably <laughs> won't experience any one of my Venus <laughs> so I, I don't have a personal experience of this type but I know what you mean. Uh, the Virgo generation was born in six, definitely in sixties. Yes, um, yes. Yes. And um, yes, because uh, sometimes people ask me this on my channel under my videos that you know this is generational thing. It doesn't matter because, um, as I have told you my example. So, so what do you think about this? Can chemistry still happen or? What is your take? Um, I didn't actually cut the last the, the, the question. Ah, okay. So, could um, you repeat the question, please? Sorry. 
Yes, yes, yes. It's about that conjunction that as I have Venus in Virgo and the people who have Pluto in Virgo, uh, there is that conjunction between us. But, uh, you know, typically we both really uh, don't experience uh, chemistry because there is that wide age gap. So is this like exception or what do you think about this? Well, I think that you might maybe connect um, through other kind of, maybe not in a love way, mm -hmm. because there is this barrier that maybe perhaps you establish the, the barrier, this uh, age gap. It, you know, you, you're conscious about the age gap, so you kind of establish this, this blockage. So you don't get this, perhaps you don't, don't let these energies um, develop spontaneously, mm -hmm. but perhaps you could um, direct this intense energy into a deep conversation, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between one another. So I think, yes, yeah, so I think because there is this, you know, when you hear the age gap, a big age gap, you feel uncomfortable and conscious of this. And then, you know, if you put that blockage, but then mm -hmm. perhaps you can direct these energies in a different way as an interesting conversation or um, if it's, it depends where you meet these people at the conference, it's going to be, you could still have this intense connection, you know, and chemistry, but it not, it was, it's, it's, it, it stays there. It doesn't go anywhere mm -hmm. else, you know? Yes. You know, uh, when I think about it, once I had this with my uh, former boss, it's like really like 12 years ago and he was obviously much older and obviously we didn't have chemistry, but he was very supportive. So so this was a great sign. So maybe, yeah, it can manifest like this. Yes. Mm. So I mm -hmm. think so. Yes. Sounds like a good example. Mm -hmm. Okay, Justina. So time flies, really. <laughs> time Just... flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so we are almost uh, done uh, with this uh, discussion for today. So I really want to thank you for reaching out and um, and giving me chance to really interviewing you for my channel. So once again, I will put everything uh, important about Justina and her services below. And yeah, who knows, maybe see you next time. Thank you very much. It was uh, great to, um, to collaborate, you know, yes. and uh, yeah. Hopefully we can do it again and discover or explore a different topic. Yes. Okay. So bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.